Welcome addicts. It is now June and we are diving headfirst into our free draft rankings and projections for the season, getting you guys uh, prepared with as much strategy as possible heading into this 2020 season and going forward, just giving you guys as much detail as we can uh, to help you guys win it this year and for many more years to come. So without further ado, we want to release our first quarterback rankings using our projections. Now, obviously, these are subject to change slightly as the uh, offseason goes on, any injuries that happen, any news that comes down the line, these could change. But uh, where we land with our first initial projections is still pretty important to uh, carve our way forward. So beginning with the quarterbacks, we look at number 10 in our projections is Drew Brees of the New Orleans Saints. Now, Drew Brees had a pretty good year last year when you consider uh, his points per game. He didn't really get the respect he deserved because he missed the uh, few games to injury in which Teddy Bridgewater took over for him. But assuming he plays a full season, uh, expecting his, you know, his throwing distance is nowhere near where it used to be. But overall, we're still expecting a really productive year from him. Over 4,300 passing yards, 32 passing touchdowns, low on the interception count. Just doesn't give you a lot of volume on the uh running side that a lot of the top tier quarterbacks gives obviously you know an aged drew Brees, but still pretty solid has an additional cast of weapons there now with uh, emmanuel sanders coming into the fray so pretty excited to see what drew Brees can do and pretty much at this point anyone in the nfc south is pretty uh, geared up to have a good season because the nfc south is the most shootout prone uh, division in the entire nfl Jumping over to number nine, this was actually a little bit surprising when we put our, our projections together because of how up and down he was uh, last year, but number nine, Aaron Rodgers. Now, we do expect there to be a bit more volatility again this year, but with all the changes that this team is making, it's likely that Aaron Rodgers doesn't take all of this lying face down, should have a bit uh, more passing volume this year, at least in the red zone. We're expecting touchdown regression from Aaron Jones, which would only lead to a few more touchdowns being thrown for Aaron Rodgers. We're not expecting a massive season uh, in terms of passing yardage, but over 4,000 yards seems pretty reasonable to protect for Rodgers at this point. 28 passing touchdowns, and he gives you a little bit more vol a little bit more ceiling with the fact that he runs the ball, at least compared to Drew Brees. So 207 rushing yards is where, you have, where we have him projected, just coming at under 300 fantasy points for the season. Jumping over to number eight, we actually have Josh Allen, quarterback for the Bills. Now that's a little bit lower than consensus, and we have some reasoning for that. We'll get more into each of these players as we do our player breakdowns, but we'll go over the projected stats. Now, obviously acquiring Stephon Diggs should help him a little bit. You know, he didn't lose any of his pass catchers from last year. Still has John Brown and Cole Beasley there, and adding Stephon Diggs can only help him going forward. Uh, part of the reason why, and we don't look into this too much, but Josh Allen's both his start and the end of the year uh, pro projected strength of schedule is really terrible. I believe he has the worst strength of schedule of every quarterback. And again, we try not to read too, too much into that. He does give you a lot of potential fantasy points with his ability to run the ball. We're just not expecting a massive increase in his overall passing touchdowns. We do see an increase in his passing yards, as can be seen here by our projections, but that doesn't put him above the likes of some of the guys we're going to talk about. So jumping up to number seven, we have Carson Wentz. Now, Carson Wentz actually has, compared to Josh Allen, he has one of the easiest strengths of schedule. And playing in the NFC East, it makes sense. No one really has a vaunted defense there, so it doesn't surprise us to see uh, using that into our projections, getting a, uh, you know, a healthy Alshon and Deshaun Jackson, hopefully healthy Alshon anyway, adding Jalen Rager, Zach Ertz, Dallas Goddard, and then a juiced-up Miles Sanders. It's a pretty, vol a pretty powerful skill set of skill position players there for Carson Wentz. And a lot of people are concerned about Carson Wentz's injury history, but you know, it's important to remember that he wasn't really on the injury report at all last year. And it basically took a cheap shot from Jadavian Clowney to take him out in the playoff game. So people remember that because it was the last thing they saw of Carson Wentz, but being able to go a full 16 games without being on the injury report is definitely a positive for his, uh, 
for th what we're projecting going into this year. So we're not expecting them to do anything crazy like move Jalen Hurts too much into the lineup. They might use him as like a gadget player like the Saints used with Taysom Hill, but we're not expecting to eat into the passing volume at all, uh, projecting him to have a little over 300 fantasy points. So yeah, again, you can kind of see these guys all fit into a very similar tier. We start to see a couple of guys break out. As we go up a little bit further, we get up to number six, Deshaun Watson for the Houston Texans. Now, Deshaun Watson losing DeAndre Hopkins cannot be uh, completely undersung, so we're expecting a dip back in terms of passing yardage and passing touchdowns, but Deshaun Watson is a very efficient quarterback. He does still have you know, plenty of weapons there with Will Fuller, Brandon Cooks, Kenny Stills, Kiki QT, uh, both David and Duke Johnson, and don't forget he has a very strong running game himself. Uh, had quite a few rushing touchdowns last year. We're expecting that to continue again. So you can start to see there's a little bit of a tear break between the first four guys we talked about into Deshaun Watson. We're expecting him to get around 316 fantasy points. Again, a little bit of a step back from the prior year, but we're not expecting a massive decline in uh, productivity from Deshaun Watson. Jumping up to number five, we have Russell Wilson. Uh, Russell Wilson would be a lot higher if he were ever to be able to escape the shackles of Brian Schottenheimer. Uh, Russell Wilson, we believe, is arguably one of, if not the most uh, talented passer in the league right now, but he needs the trust of the offense to, or trust of the coaching staff to uh, let him loose. Now, if Carson, or Chris Carson ends up getting hurt again to start the season with Rashad Penny out, they might have to turn to a higher uh, pass volume team. So take these projections with a grain of salt. These are probably closer to Russell Wilson's floor at this point rather than his ceiling. So he could have a lot more fantasy volume should this team turn into a pass first team. It's just we're not projecting that at this point because that's just not the offensive philosophy that the Seahawks have ever chosen to go with. Uh, jumping up to number four, we have Kyler Murray, expecting a pretty big step forward uh, with the addition of DeAndre Hopkins, stepping into the second year of the league and uh, on Cliff Kingsbury's offense that had one of the most, uh, I believe it was either first or second passing attempts last year. We're expecting that to take another step forward there. They improved their offensive line in the draft. And again, with the addition of DeAndre Hopkins, cannot be undersung what that can do for a quarterback. Kyler Murray uh, sends his regards to Deshaun Watson, but he's going to utilize that pretty well this year. We're expecting uh, a massive boost in his overall passing yards. And last year, the overall red zone touchdown conversion of, of uh, passing touchdowns was well below league average. We're expecting a re regression towards the mean for Kyler, bringing his passing touchdowns up above 25. Uh, still have him getting about 500 rushing yards, which is where he was on track to go last year. So we're expecting a very good season from Kyler Murray. I understand taking Russell Wilson over Kyler Murray just because of his potential to have a much higher ceiling should the team change. But Kyler Murray could also see even an even higher ceiling than what we have uh, projected for him as well. So these guys all have very high ceiling ceiling going a bit early in drafts probably not going to end up with too many of them in redraft leagues but really like the ceiling that Kyler Murray presents this year uh, jumping up to number three we have Dak Prescott finished as the number two quarterback last year expecting a another very efficient season from Dak heading into 2020 the Dallas Cowboys defense is even worse than it was last year this is going to be a team that is going to need to rely on their offense to win games, and we're expecting them to do a lot of it. Mike McCarthy is a, a pass-first coach, and with uh, Kellen Moore there still leading the offense, uh, we're expecting similar efficiency as we saw last year. Hopefully, Murray Cooper can stay healthy, but with the addition of CeeDee Lamb, uh, Blake Jarwin coming in and being able to take over as the leading tight end there, Still have Ezekiel Elliott and Michael Gallup there as well. Just a tremendous core of pass catchers. We're expecting Dak to have a pretty similar season to last year. I believe this is actually a little bit less efficient than last year, but we're still expecting him to be a very high fantasy finisher. Also could easily see his rushing touchdowns go back up. Last year he had two. Previous seasons he had about five. So we're projecting him for three, but that could also go up as well, which would give him a little bit more of a ceiling there. Projecting him to have about 340 fantasy points. Uh, wouldn't projecting him to have over 5,000 yards, but if anyone's going to do it, Dak Prescott is definitely on the short list of guys that could do it this season. All right, uh, jumping up to number two, Patrick Mahomes. Now, Patrick Mahomes jumps up to number one if we're looking at a six-point quarterback league, but what we're talking here is four points for touchdowns. 
Uh, right now we have him projected at 4,800 yards, 38 passing touchdowns, and a little bit more rushing volume. I think we saw in the Super Bowl last year and in the games when Patrick Mahomes wasn't dealing with uh, the dislocated knee I- injury. He does have the tendency to run the ball, and I believe there's some untapped potential in his ability to run the ball as well. So don't think of Patrick Mahomes as a pure pocket passer, but clearly he's the best pocket passer in the league when he acts as such. We're expecting massive, another massive season from the Kansas City Chiefs. The only reason why he wouldn't be needed to do this much is if the defense continues to play like it did. Towards the end of the year, they may not need uh, him to win, will as many games to victory. However, we saw in the playoffs how quickly that could happen if the team gets boat raced. Patrick Mahomes has the ability to just put up massive fantasy points for your team. Uh, he's going to go very high in draft, so it's probably going to be against our recommendation in drafting him but if you do end up with him he gives you one of the highest floors and a really good ceiling for a quarter at the quarterback position and then of course number one haven't mentioned him yet is Lamar Jackson again this is more so looking at the fact that rushing yards are so much more valuable than passing yards in terms of fantasy points scored this is assuming one point for 25 yards for passing yards but then also one point for 10 yards for rushing yards so rushing yards give such an advantage when it comes to the amount of fantasy points earned it's a little bit ridiculous and that's probably a rule change that we could potentially look at changing in the future but as long as that continues to be the standard you're basically getting a cheat code with Lamar Jackson now you may notice that this is actually a statistical regression in terms of passing yard I'm sorry in terms of rushing yards a little bit up in terms of passing yards so we're we're expecting the run to pass volume to be a little bit more heavily weighted towards the pass this year but with the way that Lamar Jackson played last year there's really no reason for them to utilize him in a massively different fa- uh, fashion so we're expecting more of the same into 2020 now this is probably more uh what we're expecting his ceiling to be last year obviously I don't expect him to have the same touchdown efficiency rate or be nearly as efficient even though the offense is in a good spot you know adding J.K. Dobbins Marquise Brown stepping into another year they do lose Hayden Hurst but Mark Andrews is still there Uh, I'm expecting good things from this offense but it's hard to have a season as efficient as they had in 2019 so it's it's easy to expect there to be at least some regression but even with that regression built in it's still easy to see how Lamar Jackson could still finish as the number one fantasy quarterback it's just a question of is he actually worth a pick in the first two rounds my vote is no and we'll get more into that later in some other videos but we wanted to go over our initial top 10 at quarterbacks and there you guys have it so uh, check out the individual player profile videos that we'll be releasing here within the next couple of days to get uh, more insight into the stats and the thought process that went behind these projections Uh, but we wanted to uh, begin by giving you guys a taste of where our rankings are headed and check out the fantasy addiction network right now we have all of our rankings head uh live on the site you can access those for free just log in by clicking the link below or go to fantasyaddictionnetwork.com make sure you hit that like and subscribe button for more content like this getting you guys ready for the 2020 season all right thank you guys so much for watching we'll see you in the next video